If you've been following the blog and the YouTube channel at all, you know we're customizing a new camper van. One of the most important elements in a small living space like our 2017 Ford Transit here is ventilation. I'm Erin from TechGadgetCanada.com, and if you don't have your enclosed living space properly ventilated, it can lead to small concerns like smells lingering, bigger issues like condensation, or large problems like mold. Choosing a good vent fan is key. For this new van build, we opted to install a Dometic Fantastic fan in its model 7350, and I would like to say thanks to Dometic for sponsoring this post. Their support helps keep the blog and the YouTube channel running, and the van for that matter, and for that I am really grateful. An early heads up that if you end up liking this video and finding it helpful to please hit that like button and give us a sub, because it does help us keep making more videos that we hope everyone out there can watch, enjoy, and learn from. In this video, we're going to take a look at the installation process for our fan and and the features of it so you can see in detail if it might be right for your build. I've brought in my husband Roger of course because he is the chief engineer, building manager and uh, all-around technical construction guy. I'm just I'm just the cheap labor. Well, neither of us applied for the job though. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> so I thought we should talk a little bit about why we decided with uh, to pick Dometic rather as our fan choice. Yeah, for sure. So Dometic's got a great reputation. Um, anybody who's been watching some van videos on YouTube knows that a lot of the van lifers really like their stuff, and you know for good reason. So far, you know we find it's uh, really quite solid uh, products. So the first product we really kind of thought about, uh, which makes a lot of sense, is a vent fan. Dometic mm -hmm. has the fantastic vent fan. And we went with one of those. Um, there's a couple of really important things, you know, when you're shopping for a vent fan. Most of these features are kind of like table stakes by now, but mm -hmm. you want to definitely make sure it's got a reversible flow so that you can, you know, exhaust, uh, you know, fumes or cooking whatever. Stuff, yeah, like smells. when you're cooking, you want to be able to exhaust that air. Uh, and you also want to be able to bring in, you know, some cool breeze. Mm -hmm. um, pro tip, some van builders, not us, but some will put in two vans, sort of like one at the front, one at oh, the back. Oh, two fans. I thought you said two vans. I might have said two vans. <laughs> but you mean two fans. Yeah, don't put another van in your van. <laughs> Terrible, <laughs> terrible idea. Two fans, right? So like one kind of like over the sleeping area, if you will, yeah. one towards the front, get that circulation going. But either way, you want to make sure that you can crack a window or whatever and get that fresh air coming in. Uh, make sure it's adjustable. You want to have a lot of speeds. Like you can see here um, that we've got like several different... Uh, um, you know, speeds that we can choose uh, and, and there's some temperature settings and whatnot as well. And of course, very important is a rain sensor. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's a kind of a good thing to have that fan, you know, running whenever you kind of are parked or whatever the case may be. And if it starts to spit a little bit while you're out on a hike or doing something like yeah. that, you want that thing to be able to close without you having to push a button. So, um, yeah, beyond that, you know, they've all pretty much got a good screen, so you don't have to worry about bugs getting in at night. Yeah. And um, they're really, really easy to set up, too, really easy to install. It's a simple, you know, 12-volt DC system and a really easy hookup. Instructions are great. So We're going to get into some of that yeah, for in sure. detail. But, yeah, those are sort of some of the key reasons why we decided to partner up with Dometic on this one. Okay, I feel like I need to issue the somewhat mandatory disclaimer. Um, we're not professionals at this. We are weekend warriors. Um, I, I like to think you're kind of semi-professional, but I am definitely not. I'm not getting paid. <laughs> so we're gonna share our experience and how we opted to do this um, after, of course, we did our research, read instructions, things like that. But of course, if you guys have questions about your installation or concerns with doing it yourself, you should definitely get help from someone who knows what they're doing. Um, the fan fits a, what I guess is a standard 14 by 14 inch ventilation opening, but since we're doing a conversion, we didn't really have a standard opening in the van so we had to make our own and that is the scary part for me because it involved cutting a hole in the roof of a van roger was not intimidated whatsoever well it's because we did one on the sprinter yeah but it's still it's like, still it's, too scary yeah you know you're, you're cutting into metal and you're you're puncturing the the envelope of your of your living space yeah you're cutting a hole in a, in a vehicle which is you know it's kind of a point of no return. And once mm -hmm. you cross that Rubicon, you hope you got it right. So here's the trick. Um, just, you know, it, what's the saying, right? Uh, measure twice, cut once. Mm -hmm. You know, it kind of helps to measure three or four times because the problem is, is that you certainly can't install a vent over one of like the structural ribs of your vehicle. Mm -hmm. So you got to make sure that like you, you, you lay it out from the inside and then you transfer your layout to the roof because you're probably going to be cutting with like a jigsaw with a metal cutting blade on the roof yeah. of the vehicle, right? So... 
um, just make sure you got it laid out properly. Um, and Double check, you, triple yeah, check, quadruple check. You know, and, and there's a couple different ways to do that, but one thing to do is if you kind of figure out where the center of the van is, or the center of the fan should be on the inside of the vehicle, you can dr drill a hole up through there. So we've got the rough opening cut for that um, shroud. I don't know what that part is called in the Fantastic Fan. We should figure that out. But what I'm going to do right now is I've, I've marked this. Uh, I've marked this reference line on the ceiling of the inside of the van, and I don't have to um, get the measurement perfect here. I'm gonna get the measurement right on top of the van. So all I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna put a screw up right here, and that's basically gonna be the, the center point um, of the where this fantastic fan is gonna be installed. Once I get up on top of the roof, then I'll see that screw hole that, you know, is uh, pushing up through there, and then I'll be able to measure, you know, seven inches to the front, seven inches to the back, and from side to side so that I can create the proper rough opening and it, it'll uh, be centered perfectly right in here. So when we drop the fan in, we'll just be able to screw it down and I'll show you the rest of the installation process from the top of the van. Want me to bring it in? Uh, gotta prime it so it doesn't rust. Okay, so we have to use this as uh, this product here is called butyl uh, butyl caulking or butyl tape. Uh, it comes in a great big ugly roll like this. Um, and as far as I can tell, this stuff is basically like it's almost like a like a rubber tape almost, right? So we're just gonna lay it down around the rough opening here, and um, when we screw the uh, fantastic fan in place which is hanging out right here. We screw that in place. It's really gonna just like compress this and form a, a good positive seal between uh, the van and the plastic flange around the, uh, the fantastic vans. And then we use self-tapping screws, right? To go through that metal and then into the, uh, the interior of, of, the, of the vehicle. I like to put um, some two by four or uh, two by two framing underneath that. Yes. I want the screw to, to grab some wood and, and pull it up and, and compress it there. You'll notice that there's, there's two types of builds. Some people do that and some people don't. I prefer that method. Mm -hmm. uh, I just think it, it's more secure and it gives that fan something to, uh, to bite into. But once you've got that, you know, you, you, you've surrounded that plastic flange on the, on the fan with um, uh, self-tapping screws. Uh, then all that's left to do is, is use the self-leveling sealant. And that seemed to seal it up really well. And we did leave it to cure for about 48, 24 hours. <laughs> 48, 24 hours. For, 48, 24 to 48 yeah. hours. Um, and then at that point, you really should have to only connect the wires that you've already strung up on the inside yeah. and you will have airflow. Now, just, just back a step, be warned, that self-leveling adhesive is super, super messy. And there's really, like, right. it's hard to do a clean job with that. So don't be too hard on yourself. But for gosh sakes, like that stuff will get everywhere if you're not careful. To use this fan, you do need the remote control. The model has no buttons on the actual fan itself, so you really do need the remote for it to be truly functional. To turn it on, you can start the manual crank if the remote isn't nearby. Now, I do wish there was also a simple reverse button on the device itself in addition to a power button, but unfortunately there's not. The remote control is really nice because it does allow you to adjust the fan from the comfort of the bed if it gets too hot or cold at night. That's just one of the handy features. The remote is battery operated and it comes with the necessary two AA batteries, very convenient. It's also got a little wall cradle so you will always have a place to store it while the van is in motion. And you can do almost anything right from this remote control, from opening or closing the vent fan, you can adjust the speed or temperature or the airflow direction. And just to elaborate on that um, temperature there is thermostat control built into the fan so there's a thermostat um, up in the device itself and the remote control lets you I guess dial in sort of your preferred temperature it's not um, it's not going to heat or air condition your space obviously but what it does let you do is you can set and I'll get you a closer shot of this you can basically set your desired temperature to what you want it to be and the fan is going to automatically turn on or off to keep the temperatures uh, inside the vehicle constant, I guess you could say. So is this fan noisy? Well, I wouldn't say it's loud, but it does have kind of a drone or a hum that you'd expect from a fan. It's not unpleasant or loud, even at high speed, and I find we can easily sleep with it running. If you ever need to clean up your fantastic vent fan model 7350, it's easy. You can remove both the screen and the fan blade for easy cleaning. 
Overall, I would say we are pretty happy with this vent fan. It has all the features we were shopping for. It was pretty easy for us to install <laughs> once you get over cutting that hole in your roof, of course. <laughs> um, and it works exactly as it should. I like yeah. the rain sensor. It keeps us dry and keeps the van safe when we're, like I say, not, uh, not around to monitor it. And the remote control option gives you a lot more control over it without having to kind of stand right underneath it and poke at it. Yeah, you know, generally speaking, a solid product, um, you know, you can buy it with confidence. So, yeah, you, you need this for your van. This is like one of the first things that you're probably going to mm -hmm. install on your uh, on your camper van. Um, and so, you know, you can take a good solid look at this one and realize that, yeah, you're getting a good thing. Yeah, we definitely recommend the Dometic Fantastic Vent Fan. Uh, prices do vary wildly depending on where you are buying it and in what country. Um, but I think it generally sells for around 500 to 600 bucks or so. But don't quote me on that. You should totally go and look it up. Uh, if you want to read more about this device or go back and reference what we've talked about, uh, head over to techgadgetscanada.com where I've posted a full blog. You can ask us any questions you have as well about our van build, about the fan, about anything, about Roger's hair, uh, either on the blog or on the YouTube channel as well. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. I am Aaron. This is Roger. What do people want to know about my hair? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they want to know what product you use. Nobody wants to know about my hair. <laughs> Until the next time, you guys, we'll see you on either Twitter or Instagram. I'm at Aaron L-Y-Y-C, and you can also reach us on Facebook at facebook.com slash techgadgetscanada. <laughs> Okay, we'll do the wrap. Do the wrap, do the wrap. You've got to do or you're supposed to do, but this fan, um, <laughs> are you going to read the script? No. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs>